technology the potency of which can be challenged but the omnipresence cannot be too wordy eh allow me to simplify it is the reason i have a platform to speak and also the reason i feel like a celebrity standing in front of an audience that filled an entire application to watch me speak you can catch me later on for my electronic signature in the past 20 years technology has experienced exponential growth of unparalleled proportions it has become the driving force of this rapidly evolving world an integral part of our lives technology has ensured that if nothing else we at least have an online presence you see as a kid i made buildings with lego toys not a day went by when i didn't solve puzzles or played any jigsaw games today i no longer solve puzzles instead i've taken a liking towards solving real life problems using technology it was 2 years ago when i first started coding and since then my life has never felt the same one of my biggest accomplishments has been creating an online student representative council voting system for my school trust me it was a hustle Now you see technology revolutionized me at 15 but of late it's been doing a good job of giving my 5 year old cousin online access to his girlfriend Now with my unceasing obsessive rant on technology it may not come to you as a surprise that I aim to work at the Silicon Valley the biggest tech hub in the world Allow me to indulge you with some facts According to the Guardian, if the Silicon Valley was its own country, it would have one of the highest economies and be one of the richest countries in the world. The Silicon Valley has given birth to 36 Einsteins, otherwise known as the world's biggest startup companies, including Google, Facebook, Apple, Intel, and many more. But what's truly interesting is that my job prospects are not limited to California Silicon Valley. 8000 miles away in a city called Bangalore, successful Indian companies are boasting of more foreign direct investment and integration of the local Indian economy with that of the world's. It truly baffles me to think how a country buried in deep debt was able to have a turnaround that increased its employment rates and took its IT sector to new heights all because of three words one liberalization this gave businesses total market control two privatization this allowed businesses to become fully private and three globalization the main reason tech started growing in the first place today ben lake calls bangalore the indian silicon valley by virtue of it having more engineers more talent more startups more ideas and more investment than ever before Bangalore is brimming with new ideas that can be tested and lead to more innovation. Now a similarity we see between the United States and India is the type of technologies they invest in. These technologies consist of artificial intelligence, robotics, internet of things and digital marketing. And what's common between all these technologies is that they've got humongous returns towards the economy. But do African countries have such large investments on technology compared to the bigger technology hubs? Does this leave Africa's creative and entrepreneurial potential as untapped? If all the other continents are advancing and progressing so well, why is it so hard for us to catch on to the wave of technology? You see my uncle told me a trend in today's profession has become entrepreneurship. and I asked him why he was like because it aligns different job markets in today's world there are many entrepreneurs who are successful but many at the same time were not now relative to california's 36 einsteins it may seem as though africa only has a handful right 
wrong. In fact, anybody who's engaged in some kind of work is ingenious in their own right. The tuk-tuk drivers you see dropping you home, dropping you school, the peanut sellers you see on the road are all entrepreneurs, but at a limited level. And entrepreneurship is the only field that aligns the tuk-tuk drivers and peanut sellers with the special guest sponsors seated in our audience today. Now, before Jeff Bezos and Jack Ma, the creators of Amazon and Alibaba, respectively acquired a net worth of which is more than all of us combined, these inspiring individuals were entrepreneurs. The turning point in their lives was when they combined their business with technology. This allowed them to reach a mass audience and allowed them to make their idea a reality. Without them, who knows, maybe online shopping would never exist. Now for those bio students out there, you must know that sunlight plus water plus chlorophyll gives you photosynthesis, a basic rule. Using this, I came up with my own theory. Entrepreneurship plus technology plus ideas get you onto the wave of technology. Right now, entrepreneurship is linked with technology more than ever. My parents now use PayPal when they want to send me money instead of the long bank procedures. Wait, we are all living in Africa. Did you know that 61% of Africans use agriculture as a source of income? Twiga Foods is an online platform for farmers in Nairobi that allows them to sell their crops online and transports them to the vendors, which makes it fully efficient and fair. This is an example of a local business tour, but even the biggest businesses in the world all somehow have a relation with technology. Apple, Samsung, you name it. Now that I've introduced the idea of integrating entrepreneurship with technology, I would like to highlight the not so instant returns it has towards the economy. Simply put, technology is a sustainable way of boosting a country's economy over long periods of time. Over long periods of time is the key phrase there. If you look back at the 1940s, the Californian Silicon Valley's growth was barely noticeable. And then looked at the late 1990s and 2000, you can see the major boost it has given to the American economy. Bangalore's return to the economy of India still continue to be reflected. But what does all of this mean for Africa? My Africa, my continent. Our Africa, our continent. 54 different countries, thousands of different languages, cultures, ethnicities, values. This is what makes us unique. We also have a myriad of ideas, brilliant ideas, countless innovations that have changed the way we conduct our lives today. Kenya alone revolutionized money transfer. M-Pesa is one of the fastest growing online money transfer platforms in the world. And it's also one of the simplest platforms. And right now it has spread from Kenya to the DRC, to Tanzania and many other countries. This just shows how much talent we already possess. And if we train people a bit more, what else can they do? They can actually reach a lot higher. You see, in Africa, it's a fact. We have many people who practice blue collar jobs. But if you think of it, wouldn't it be better for people to practice white collar jobs instead of blue collar jobs? Wouldn't it be better if people had the skills to handle technology versus doing blue collar jobs? And this is all possible. I'm not saying it's not, it is. All that we need to do is train people. One way I thought of is vocational training. If people are given vocational training, then they can obtain the adequate skills needed and help the continent grow. Now this relates to optimum utilization of resources because human resource is one of the strongest and the most powerful tools we have as a continent. Africa has the fastest growing population in the world and we must use this to our benefit. 
Now, if we look back to this slide over here, technology is the only thing missing because we've got a variety of entrepreneurs. We've got booming ideas. All that's missing is technology. Now, jumping a few scopes into the future, I can ask, can Nigeria be the next Silicon Valley in Africa? You know, when I'm bored or when I'm meant to be doing my work, I often scroll to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat at times. But then again, I keep complaining about my looming deadlines. But who doesn't? The CEO of Twitter called Jack Dorsey is going to live in Nigeria as he sees lots of potential in the country. Nigeria is making advancements technologically, socially, and economically, making it a pool of potential. The economy of African countries, including Nigeria, would have a breakthrough if the government can play a small role. If governments can take action to support country, then anything is possible. We take a back look to Japan's government back then. Japanese decided they'll become the biggest ship exporters in the world, and the government enforced all the ship companies to use all their power on ships and became the biggest ship exporters in the world. Then they decided they'll become the biggest car exporters in the world, and they got Toyota. Then they decided they'll move on to bikes, and they got Honda. So what I'm trying to say here is that it's the direction the government gives to us. And the government directed companies such as METI in Japan, and that allowed Japanese to progress and advance in their familiar goal. Bill Gates once said, don't compare yourself with anyone or you'll be insulting yourself. But when talking about inventions, people many a times refer to saying, like the United States, like China, like India. When talking about development, people refer to saying, why aren't we as developed as the United States? But what people don't get is that we're not trying to be United States. We don't need to close a developmental gap between United States and African countries. All we need to do is use technology in a unique way that can help us African countries raise our economy. That's it. With a unique background as African countries, what can we not achieve? It all starts with a vision and the determination to never give up. So take it from me as I take you to the future. Call me a doobie or the young Bill Gates because I'll open the gates to success and take you to a greater place. From Lagos to Comoros, a smart lock on every door, a laptop in every classroom, and crypto in every store. Unimaginable, but this is the future of Africa. Let's all take it to the future. Thank you.